What's up, knitters? This is Jana with Pearl Together. So you're thinking, why am I in the barn? Goodness, Clementine. So we are out in the barn because there's too many things happening in the house. Um, my kids are doing schoolwork. They go to virtual academy, and so their school is online. Uh, so that's, I've been told I'm disruptive. <laughs> I'm too loud when I record videos. So I'm outside for that reason. And also because it's harvest time, I have a huge garden and the freeze dryer is running in the background and it tends to be kind of loud, like all over the house. So I'm outside. Normally I try to take a shower and I try to do all this stuff before I video, but you know what? It's just not going to happen. We're having a little bit of a freak out about the garden because I looked at the, uh, weather forecast several days out and it's actually supposed to be 29 degrees and raining slash snowing on Tuesday night. I have over 100 tomato plants. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do about that. <laughs> so uh, I have salsa going on the stove. I've done several pints of salsa already, any, uh, sauce already. Anyway, that's all beside the point. So the point of today's little impromptu video is a frequently asked questions for our felted clog knit along starting tomorrow. Now, many, I've gotten lots of comments on the YouTube channel as well as in the Facebook and the Ravelry groups um, that are all similar questions. So I have my little note card out here in the barn and Clementine and I will address your questions about the felted clog knit along. Now, the first thing I wanna say is if you can't start tomorrow or you don't have your, your yarn yet, it's okay. That's just when the video is gonna start being uploaded. If you can't start until two weeks from now, really, it's fine. The videos will be there for you, don't fall. The videos will be there for you whenever you're ready. I will be present in the groups whenever you're ready. There's lots of experienced knitters with lots of, uh, you know, ability to answer questions if I'm not if I'm not logged in at any given time. Not to worry. So don't worry if you're, you you don't have your yarn yet or whatever. It's totally fine. We'll be there. So um, mostly, I just wanted to start on you know tomorrow. But I have to say, I have all these things happening today. Uh, we've been working goats this week. And anyway, the video for tomorrow, the cast on video will not be uploaded at 6 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. It's not gonna happen. I'm gonna have to sleep at some point. So it will be up tomorrow, but I can't exactly say when tomorrow. But the first question I've been getting is, what kind of yarn do I need for this? So I have links down below where you can order yarn from my favorite local yarn store, the Needlepoint Joint in Ogden, Utah. Rebecca and I did a video uh, just last week about the yarn they have in stock and what she would suggest. So click on those links down below and look at what they have to offer. Uh, the Plymouth Galway is a very good option. It's affordable, it's 100% wool, so it's feltable. If you have yarn in your stash, then by all means use that. Support your local, local yarn store if you have one. Absolutely support those local people as well. The Needlepoint Joint is just an option if you don't have a local yarn store, or maybe your local yarn store isn't accepting orders right now or they're not open. So it's just a choice. 100% wool, not super wash. It needs to be able to be felted. Now I misspoke during the last video. I'm using Lamb's Pride Worsted and or Lamb's Pride Bulky. It is 85% wool and 15% mohair. I misspoke on my interview with Rebecca and I said alpaca, I'm not sure what possessed me to say that, but it's mohair, which is very durable. So that's awesome. You can use lots of blends, alpaca and wool mix tends to felt really well. Feel free to do that. Uh, just make sure that it's not anything synthetic. Acrylic will not felt, super wash wool will not felt. So I hope that clarifies that for you a little bit. As far as the needle selection, uh, the pattern wants you to use 13 or nine millimeter, but you use whatever you need to, to get gauge. The gauge is 10 stitches over four inches. Okay, so that's two and a half stitches per inch with whatever needles. So again, as I always preach, it's not about the needle size, it's about the gauge. So use whatever needles you need to, to get that gauge. Now that's pre-felted gauge, okay? If you're also unsure about the fibers that you're using, just knit a little swatch and then felt it in the washer or by hand. And I'll get into that later, but you can felt it in your washing machine by just throwing it in with a pair of towels and seeing what happens. Felting just is a result of temperature and agitation. It's mostly agitation that caused felting. Uh, the yardage, one third of the yardage is the upper portion of the clog slipper and the two thirds are the sole. Now, if you find yourself running short on yarn or you're not sure, 
the sole is two layers. You're knitting two soles for each slipper. So you, there's no law that says they have to match. You could have the interior sole be a different color than the exterior sole. I've done that before when I'm just using up scraps and I'm just gonna make a scrappy pair of slippers and I don't care what color they are. I just want them to be warm and felted. So you could do that, think about that. Um, I don't know how that would change your yardage requirements exactly, but you know, if you're knitting from stash, stash and you're using up scraps, have some options. Okay, but if you're using new yarn that you're ordering from somewhere or you happen to have a brand new brand new skeins or balls in your stash, then you figure one third is the top of the foot part and two thirds are the soles and the cuff, okay? All right. Uh, oh, the other thing that I've done in the past, if you're not sure about colors, is I've had, like, since this is worsted weight held double, I'll use uh, complementary colors maybe and hold two strands together one of each color so maybe a gray and a blue or and you kind of get this mottled tweedy effect so that can be fun to experiment with I usually stick with solid colors for the sole but again there's no knitting police do what strikes you it's fun to experiment with that especially if you're gonna make a bunch of different pairs for gifts for Christmas okay let's talk about the needles a little bit more so don't stress too much about the length of the cable you can magic loop if you need to you can do a half of a magic loop where instead of having two loops on each end you have like one circle or you can use a longer cable if you need to and knit the whole thing back and forth i might be doing that and i'll show you some options for that if you don't have the the same length cable that they call for in the pattern don't stress about it i promise i'll show you how it'll work out just fine okay not to worry. I won't leave you hanging. I never have. <laughs> All right. So drop a comment down below if you have any further questions. So I hope this helps clarify everything and I will be casting on tomorrow.